from the islands in the far east of the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic archipelagos, from the hot coast of North Africa to the cold waters of Scandinavia. World of Warships maps aren't just an arena for two battling teams. They also offer opportunities to enjoy the landscapes of different parts of the globe. In update 0.11.5, we continue expanding the horizons of our game by introducing a map that has come to exist thanks to the choice of our players, the Faroe Islands. Geographically, the Faroe Islands are located in the northern part of the Atlantic Ocean, between Scotland and Iceland. Snow-covered cliffs, huge glaciers, hot springs, and numerous islands that have little to no vegetation. These are the elements that form the layout of the new map. Here, captains playing tier seven to 10 ships and super ship will have an opportunity to fight in three kinds of weather conditions, early morning, bright sunny day, and dense fog. Faroe Islands is a map with two possible options for the domination mode, either with three or four key areas. We'll begin our review of the new map with the former. There are three main directions on the Faroe Islands map. The first one is an open water area with an island range and emerging cape in square C3. It offers excellent cover for destroyers and light cruisers capturing key area A. Open water in this part of the map is a hunting ground for battleships and cruisers that prefer fighting from a distance. Elusive torpedo destroyers can also succeed here. An island ridge next to the key area will work for fans of positional combat at medium and close ranges. The islands cover ships from enemy fire from the other two directions. In the center of the Faroe Islands is key area B. It's one of the most interesting features of the map. This is an arena for destroyers and cruisers going for the capture, enclosed by four islands. Sloping on one side and steep on the other, they can become a good firing position for cruisers with high arcing ballistic trajectories. Ships with search equipment, the hydroacoustic search and surveillance radar consumables will be especially valuable in this area. If you position yourself near one of the side islands, the opposite part of the key area will have clean lines of fire in this case, to hide from shells, destroyers capturing B should cling to the cliffs of the side island, closer to the enemy, virtually on the enemy half of the map. Of course, nothing will protect such a daredevil from fire from the other side, so you need to pick the right timing for the capture while taking enemy locations on the map into account. You can easily guess the last direction by a landmark, a large wedge-like cliff. It's also the center of key area C, this direction suits almost all ship types. Open water will do for long-range skirmishes and stealth torpedo attacks. Destroyers will feel comfortable in a cluster of small icebergs, and brawling ships can prove themselves near the two islands. By the way, ships hiding behind the wedge-like cliff can not only support their allies, but also block the capture of key area C. The Faroe Islands map with four key areas has a few differences. The first one is smaller key areas. Thus, the Cape will no longer play such a crucial role in capturing A. In all other aspects, tactically, there are few changes compared to the first version of the map. Key area B is still a place for duels between fast and maneuverable ships. The islands surrounding it are still good for supporting ships. The last direction differs most notably. Key areas C and D are home areas for the teams. But this area of the map doesn't lose its tactical importance. Open water is still a great place for those who love long-range skirmishes. At the same time, the pace and distance of the battle change. Teams have to steadily and carefully push the enemy in the direction of the flank instead of making swift attacks. Small icebergs and the wedge-like cliff are convenient for close-range battles. Two small islands within the boundaries of both key areas are worth a special mention. They're quite useful from the tactical point of view, 
protected by one of the islands, an enemy destroyer that manages to break through can start capturing the key area, while the Allied destroyer, in turn, can block it. The Faroe Islands map has cover for aircraft carriers as well. Two small islands on each side near the spawn area of the teams. Our recommendations in this video are conditional. Each player is free to pick any direction and any position. After all, this is how tactics are born on new maps. We hope that your choice of tactics on the Faroe Islands will result in victory.